Okay, welcome back to Algebra 2, Semester 2, Units 10 and 7b. This is page 5 of your packet. We are starting here with reflections. Oh, try not to get this too close. Let me see where I'm at. Okay, here we go. Uh, down at the bottom of page 5, I just want to go over reflecting parent functions. You've got square root. Go ahead and write your square root parent function. You probably already have memorized that this looks like a hook like that. Now, we want to reflect that. If you think about what a reflection looks like, you're standing here looking down into a pond, and you see your reflection, right? Well, we want to do the same thing with this graph. We want to take and reflect it across this x-axis. So, where we had 0, 0 as our point in our parent function, and we had square root of 1 equaling to 1 right there on that point, and then over here at 4, we had the square root of 4 being 2, and so we had that point. Well now, we're saying we want this graph to go 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 4, negative 2, so we want to turn that hook upside down. How do we change our equation to get that result? We know we have the shape as a hook, so it's got to go with a square root. If we put a negative in here, that would cause an imaginary number. We saw that in our first semester of Algebra 2. But what we want is we want our answer here to be negative, negative. So we want the negative after we get the answer for the square root. Easiest place and the only place to put that negative is right here right in front. That will cause your reflection. So, reflections, just like with the shapes, carry a pattern. So what is a reflection? It is the graph flipped over the x-axis. Now let's go on to page 6. We've got cube root here. If you don't remember from uh, the video yesterday, look back at it, but the cube root looked a lot like your square root. It went up this way. And then it also went down this way because you can have a negative of a cube root. So we see here that for the cube root, the cube root of 8 was 2, cube root of 1 was 1, cube root of 0 is 0, cube root of negative 1 was negative 1, and the cube root of negative 8 was negative 2. Now we want a reflection. So we can picture that right here. We're going to take this one, flip it over the x-axis, it comes down like that. We take that one, flip it over the x-axis, it comes up looking like that. But what would we do to our parent function to get the results there? We want to plug in 8 and get negative 2. Well the cube root of 8 is 2. So again we say, well how would we get the negative in front? just like before, put the negative. No surprises here. If it reflected the square root function, it'll reflect the cube root. So coming down to exponential growth, remember it went through at 0, 1, and then every line to this side got twice as big because of the 2 here. That's our growth. And going this way, it was half as big. Now, if we want to reflect that, we know we want this 1 to become negative 1. We want that L-shaped graph upside down. 
So we look back at our equation and we follow the same pattern that we've had in these others. In math it's always patterns and similar processes. If we put negative 2 to the x, does it work? Let's check out 0. Will 0 become negative 1? Well 0 plugged in there, negative 2 to the 0th. Any number to the 0th power is 1. And then we have the negative out in front, so it does become negative 1. We want to check another one. So we have negative 2 to the first. Well, we have 2 raised to the first power, that's 2, times negative is negative 2. Second, negative 2 squared. Now remember, if this negative is not in parentheses, we don't square the negative. So it literally becomes negative 4. In order to get a positive 4, you'd have to have parentheses around that, and it would be negative 2 times negative 2. This way, it's simply 2 squared times a negative. Okay, same thing on the 1 half exponential decay. Remember, our L went this way this time, because it's decaying going left to right, decaying by a half. So in order to reflect that, if you've already gotten ahead of me and you went negative one-half raised to the x, you are correct. It will go just like this, just a reflection of that graph. And it is caused by that negative in front. This one, remember these were our wings. They were located right here, right here. And now to reflect that one, it would come down here. And to reflect this one, it would go up here because you're reflecting across the x-axis. And in order to make that happen, we have to change this parent function to reading y equals negative 1 over x. Okay. Now that you've done all of these, I would like you to go back as homework tonight and give the reflection domain and range. Okay, just list it right below it, domain and range, and give me what those are. I want to see those. I want to talk to you about them. Come and check them with me in the morning during class. Okay, so on this video number two, it's listed in your beginning guide as stretching and shrinking. Again, it's kind of like reflection. We're just going to affect our parent graph. So let's go ahead and put our parent graph over here. y equals square root x. And we graph back in our hook shape. Now remember, some of our key points here. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 was 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So what we want to do this time, it says, how can we shrink this toward the x-axis? So let's make them half the height. Well, zero's on the x-axis. You can't get any closer than that. But at 1, 1, we want to become 1 at 1 half. And at 4, we want to become 1 instead of 2. We're going to cut them in half. So originally, how we had 0, 1, and 4, and we had 0, 1, 2. We're saying, no, we want to shrink this down to the x. We're going to make it 0, 1 half, and 1. So how are we taking our answers here and cutting them in half? Well, remember before, we changed them to negative by simply multiplying by a negative out in front. Let's simply multiply our answer by a half. By order of operations, you're going to figure out your root first and then multiply by that half. Simple as that. And guess what's cool? It's going to work in every parent function. So we have y equals cube root of x. 
Hopefully you're remembering the pattern there. It's the S shape. Key points at negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 was negative 2. Cube root of negative 1 was negative 1. Cube root of 0, 0. Cube root of 1, 1. So now we come over to this one and we say, well, we want to take the same results as what we had, but shrink it by a half. Let's try what worked in our square root function. If we get negative 2 for the cube root of negative 8, and we multiply that by a half, half of 2 is 1, so it would become negative 1. So way out here at negative 8, we're at negative 1 instead of negative 2. And at negative 1, half of negative 1 would be negative 1 half. Half of 0, just like in the square root, we can't get any closer than 0. So we see that our s now has gotten very, very skinny or squished down. We say that it shrinks when we do this. Anytime we multiply by a fraction that is less than 1, absolute value less than 1, it's going to draw it into the x-axis. So with exponential growth, same thing, 2 to the x, we know the L went up like that. It grew by 2 on each successive input. So now we say, well, we want to take half of that growth. Remember, by order of operations, you're going to raise it to the exponent before you multiply. So really all it does there is it cuts each point in half, draws it down much closer to your x-axis. We say that shrunk, or it shrinks to the x. Exponential decay, hopefully you remember these, the exponential decay is the fraction one because it's getting less as it goes to the right. So it has that nice gentle slope going this way. Now if we want to take half of that, all that it does, it might look confusing there, but all that it's doing is it's taking these points and bringing them half the distance from zero, so it's just a lot lower shift. Okay? That's when we're shrinking. Now we say, well, what if we want to, oh, almost forgot, rational expressions. Remember our parent function, y equals 1 over x. Um, and we have our asymptote here, so we have our wings that go out like this. Now, on this one it is kind of funny. We don't show the half out in front. Instead we'll show it up above in place of that one. Okay, so half there simply takes this point, shrinks it down, shrinks all of this, the distance here off of the origin shrinks down. Your distance across here, notice how it's pretty wide here. You get into shrinking and it's this distance that's shrinking. Okay. Identify the shape of the graph and the effect simply by examining the function. Cube root, hopefully you can remember, it's this shape. Three-fourths it's shrinking. So we're shrinking this shape. One half, now it's point 0.3 is really 3 tenths, so again that's a fraction. Absolute value less than 1. So we say that it's um, the exponential decay going this way and it shrinks. 
This one, square root, that's that hook shape. It's got one third in front, one third has an absolute value less than one. So we say it shrinks. X is on the bottom. I hope you recognize that as your expon or not exponential, your uh, rational expression graph like this, and it shrinks because it's 0 0.03. So it's three hundredths. It's really shrinking down. This is an exponential growth going this way, one fifth. So it shrinks as well. I would expect you to be able to look at those and picture in your mind's eye what they're going to look like and whether they're shrinking or not. Which one shrinks the closest to the x-axis? You would have to put those in order. So we have 3 fourths, 3 tenths, uh, 1 third, 3 hundredths, and 1 fifth. Well, in order to see uh, which one's closest, to the x-axis, we would look at our denominators. The, the one that's cut into the tiniest pieces is the hundredths. The hundredths would be your smallest pieces because it's the most pieces within one. Uh, and there's only three of those. Tenths, just give you an example, if we changed it to hundredths, would be thirty hundredths. Three-fourths is getting very close to four-fourths, uh, which is one. So we would say 3 hundredths would be our lowest. We can also convert them all to decimals and see which decimal is the smallest. Okay, I'll show you that in the next example. Now we're going to stretch. Going to stretch our functions. Well, back to our square root. By drawing these, I hope you have them down. The parent function here looks like the hook. So now we want to stretch it twice as